So I would I'm go ahead uh, to talk about the detail about the, the, the OpenMV 4.0 features. So uh, Barbara also mentioned that we kind of increased uh, the number of pages from some uh, by significant figures. So this is, uh, uh, you can tell it uh, after, after I list all the features that we have. So um, since this is a, a, a high performance uh, computing environment, so I got to, some show, so got to show some hardware. So uh, this is uh, the hardware that we are kind of uh, uh, using that, like uh, someone will wonder why that one is that big, because uh, that, if you recognize what that one is, the one on the left hand, left hand corner, so that one help, uh, to, uh, helps uh, pay my salary. So you can figure out what that is. Uh, right? So um, in terms of the number of the, the features, so here, here is the kind of uh, uh, general list of the features. Uh, we have uh, uh, different the feature you can tell is from different aspects and also has that kind of different use case. Uh, I will go through, I will try to go through all of them. Uh, I'll try to go through most of them, uh, especially the first few that's uh, in particular uh, of people interest and, all, and in particular is a uh, kind of a very uh, significant change in, the, in terms of the, the execution model and also in terms of memory model in, in, in OpenMP specification. As Barbara mentioned this morning, this is a, a significant shift in the, in the whole idea and the whole concept of the uh, OpenMP uh, specification. So let's start with the uh, device construct. Is uh, in the specification you will find only only device construct. This term you won't find accelerator or GPU or and all all these things. Basically, this is uh, we use the general, most uh, generic term as a uh, device construct. I will start with device construct. I will move on to the other, uh, go on to the other uh, topics. So let's clarify some terminology that you will uh, that we will use in this uh, in, in this uh, presentation. Also. Also, this terminology are, are used in the specification as well. Just help you to kind of uh, understand uh, when we call it, talking about device, not particular like this is the GPU or uh, whatever brand name of GPU. This is from the specs per, uh, perspective, we, do, we, we have kind of very abstract, abstract level of understanding of that device, okay? So device is, uh, uh, I just uh, call it from the specs, it's, it's an implementation defined logical ex execution engine. We just, the spec just treat it as an engine. We don't care about what, what the brand name is, what, what's, the, what's, what's the detailed architecture is. So we have the two different kind of different kinds of devices in the, in the specification, and also in the whole view of the OpenMP. One is called host device, and the other is a typical target device. So host device, usually we will take it as a, the CPU, okay? And also that the, whole, the host device is, the, is where the whole, the, whole, the, the, the OpenMP program starts. Or the whole the program begins is where that begins. It begins on host device first, and then the target device is uh, as this uh, data is this is a device onto which code and data may be offloaded from the host device, and also this is implementation implementation defined. So um, the, the target device just kind of a, a device is separate from the host. Or host, I mean it's not it's not the host separate from the host that you can put some data and put some. Uh, code and execute on the host, okay? So notice that the implementation defined in the specs means that this is optional. That means that, and uh, OpenMP spec also support some implementation that does, does not support uh, a GPU or, uh, or and, and anything, so only CPU. So there's a two class, uh, two different kinds of uh, uh, devices in here. So I will, I, will, I will use this term to distinguish, this is the CPU, this is the the, the, the target device, that means maybe GPU, maybe FPGA, maybe, maybe something else, okay? So let's start with, quickly go through the execution model, and this can, can give you some concept, because everything, everything based on what we have learned, or what we have heard about in this morning, about the, the OpenMP, and also we build on this. So the whole Device construct or accelerator support in OpenMP is, is starting from this, this very important concept. The whole thing is host centric, okay? Everything is still start on the host. As I said, this is a host, this is a host device. The OpenMP program has to start on the host, okay? So let's and then talk about the, the target device later on. So everything start on the host. So, and then the host, starting from the host, offload the target 
region or target target region to the to the to the target device. Okay, this is uh, the whole idea, and the target uh, region may be executed by a target uh, device or, or host device. So, so if you go back to the terminology, there's a, there's a very uh, uh, there's a term may be in here. So, as I mentioned that the the the, the complying uh, open open MP implementation can uh, can be not supporting uh, any GPU or any attacker device. So this is kind of the whole idea, the whole kind of design uh, objective is that whatever that uh, the, the, the current OpenMP, uh, the, the target, uh, sorry, the, the open po OpenMP program with uh, target uh, uh, directive in it still can run on the CPU. This is the whole idea of that. So um, let's get back to here, the, the execution model and then the, Okay, so then we have, uh, for example, in the right hand side, you have the diagram that just uh, illustrate what, what's going on. So as I said, that the whole the whole program is on the host. Okay, so when it, when the program encounter the target, so I will introduce the target directive later, and then just get get get, get the idea. This is what it looks like if you want to offload this piece of uh, code onto the the target. So it, uh, we, when the program encounter the target uh, re, uh, the construct, it will offload the whole package, the whole construct, and, and offload to device. If the device is available or if the device is support, okay. So this is these are all these conditions as, as, as to support. Otherwise, it will be executed on the host, okay. There's, we we develop some kind of specific the specification where it's, where it's kind of flexible that uh, that that different environment. If this is a host only environment, everything we just business as usual. We just everything executed on the host. If there's a device available, so, and the, the device available and available to be used, so this is all, it can be uh, offloaded to the to a device. And also in this, the other situation, if the device is busy, okay, it's very busy, it cannot be used anymore. So it can still kind of, the whole thing is still be executed on the host. Okay, there's a, a lot of uh, a, a situation there. So a little bit further about uh, the whole thing is that uh, one significant, uh, a, a very important point is that yes, this is the, the another illustration of how the target, uh, uh, the, the, the target region is being executed on the on the device. So uh, on the left hand side, okay, so this is uh, the in the diagram in the diagram on, on the left hand side, this is the the host part that. So this is the host this is being signal on the on the host uh, device, and then we see the target region, and then we just offload this on the host. So what happens is that the whole thing is synchronized. It's synchronized in the sense that this program, this the, the threat executed this part of this part of the program will 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 will, uh, will wait here until the whole target region is complete and then proceed. Okay, this is not a synchronous uh, operation. This is synchronous operation. So this is that means. The thread executing this part and then offload this to to the device, and that thread will wait at the end of the of the region until this uh, target region complete and then proceed further. Okay, this is very important. Don't expect that it will kind of a synchronize a asynchronous uh, uh, operation. This one concept that I will need to illustrate. There. So I'll move on to, and also that um, there's also we also introduce. Uh, uh, team construct. So within the device, so in the in the previous uh, side, that it's that uh, each each thread can have can have its own thread. So each device can have its own thread. Okay. So if you think of any modern uh, GPU, uh, for example, Nvidia Nvidia GPU, they they have a multiple very very many 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 threads that can be run on on the G GPU. So that means uh, each device has its own threads. Okay, that will become very useful later on. I'll kind of step by step introduce that, that concept. And it, uh, will, uh, we have many threads. And, the, the, and also, if, if you have multiple devices, if your system has multiple devices, the threads on one device cannot be migrated to the thread on the, the other device. This is, this is, uh, this is obvious. So, so, uh, so, and also, since uh, the device have many threads, we can coordinate or we can organize that thread in terms of teams. Okay, I'll introduce that teams uh, 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 later. So if you are familiar with the uh, media GP, uh, GPU or, or CUDA programming, you will, you will see this. 
This is the block and all this kind of hierarchy uh, inside the MEDV. This is one kind of a concept in here. So uh, I'll just introduce the teams, and then when I introduce the, the team's construct, you'll be, become very, very obvious. So that each team has its own group of uh, each team, each team has its own uh, group of threats. So the, a device can be a multiple teams. Okay. So this is a kind of the different hierarchy of it. And then, and then uh, later on, you will see the, how we can exploit this in, in, uh, by using the OpenMP constructs. So, so there's a team construct, uh, team concept in here. So um, the execution model is uh, is uh, is mentioned, and also the the data model, the device data model. I need to also mention about device data model because when we are dealing with, uh, as uh, Barbara mentioned this morning, that uh, even though when we are using the shared memory system, we need to pay some attention about the the, the, the data consistency in there. So. And also that is more important, even more important when we're dealing with the, 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 host, uh, the, the host device and the target device, they have a different memory, totally different separate memory, most of, most of the, the uh, architecture. So, um, so that's why it's very important to get the memory right on the host and on, on, a, on a target device. And it's also uh, because it's possible that to have, uh, to have the data out of sync. Uh, or even some data maybe, if you are not careful enough, some data even, if you try to use it on a device, uh, uh, sorry, target device, so you, you, that, that data is not available for us. Uh, if you forget to kind of, um, transfer the device over, or allocate the device on, uh, so allocate the data on the device, on a target device. And, and we also we have to introduce some, some kind of uh, rule that, that uh, in terms of uh, the data availability on the device and so all uh, that host device and our target device. I'll introduce the, the, the data mapping uh, attribute uh, class that uh, we'll, we'll see later on. So um, we have some classes to kind of um, what we call, we use the term mapping, mapping between the, ho the host device and the target device to make the data consistent, if the data needs to be consistent in the, in the, in the computation. And because uh, the reason why we need to be very careful about it, because the data transfer between the the host device and the target device is, is known to be very expensive, and the latency is always is always there. So we need to be very careful. Okay, let's introduce some some construct in the uh, in the OpenMP uh, for the uh, accelerate uh, device construct. So the first is the uh, the target data construct. So this is the syntax. The whole idea is that uh, each Target data construct. We create uh, a new device data environment. Okay. Remember that each each parallel region, the fundamental region that uh, the OpenMP has, is the, that each parallel region has their own data environment. And this is pretty much the same idea that apply to the, the target data. They have their own device data environment. That device data environment is sitting on the on the on the on the, the target device. Okay. So. And this target data and sorry, this target data region is being executed by the host device, and also that uh, all the execution executable sta statements inside the the, da the target data uh, is uh, executed by the host. Okay, this is such, such, a, such a point that I need to uh, mention. So the whole idea is that if you have uh, if you have some data on the host, okay. You want to make this data available on the device because by itself the data, the device won't have an idea that you have a data ten in here. So, so you need to have some construct here. The data target, uh, the target data construct will be serving that, that purpose. I will show you why why this is the very particular use is very useful. It's, it's, it's necessary in this case in some with some examples. And this target and target data construct, okay. I will introduce the target the construct later on. I share some uh, very, uh, set of sim, uh, a set, uh, uh, some called classes. So what we call device classes, zip class, and map class. So I will highlight the map class that I will use an example to illustrate how this used map class. The map class have different map type uh, to from uh, to from. So uh, remember the whole thing is host centric. Okay, everything is uh, looking at from the point of view of a host. Two means that we're mapping from, from the host to the device. That means transfer data from the host to the device and from the reverse. Two from is both direction, okay? And so 
the, their lock is basically we I want to have this data available on the on the device. That means I, I, I just allocate it, not initializing it. That's it. Okay. So I will use some example to illustrate this. Let's start, let's start with a, a very simple example that we have so that, uh, to illustrate the target data cost. And, and this is just a very simple one. And again, it's not doing anything. It's just uh, we have a, 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 a int n, and I map this in to the, to the target region. What this line tells us is that, that, uh, that I want to create a data environment on the device, the target device. And I want to map this n variable. To the device, uh, that means I make sure that this n variable is this n variable is is available when I use it on the on, on the device. Okay, so and um, but uh, you look up the rule that by default the map m is just to and from. That means I what it means that I uh, at the beginning of the region I will transfer the data. That means I will transfer the data map from the post to a device. That means on the device here on the uh, so on the target device target region. In the in the target device uh, on the target device, n is equal to zero and is initialized because I transfer the data from the host to the device. Okay, so and also this also uh, implies that this since this is the map cross here is in out, it also at the end of the target region, in this case target data region, I also want to map the data back to the host. So do we have two transfer? One is the beginning transfer in. And transfer out in this case, okay? Because by default, this map is in out. And then after the region here, so when I, when I do some modification of the n in somewhere on the device, so I, 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 if I print n, I will get the, the variable that I modify in, on the device, okay? So this is uh, the whole the summer idea. So also make, uh, make a note that if, uh, if there's an execution statement here in the target data, Target, target data construct is not executable construct. It's just an encapsulation, some target. I want this set of data to be on the device. And this i equal to 10 is executed on the host. Okay, there's one uh, uh, there's a, uh, significant difference between the target construct that I will introduce later on. Okay, uh, so there's a possibility that uh, uh, you can have multiple GPU or multiple device, a target device attached on, on the host device. So that there's, we have a, uh, I just show you that there's, we have device class in here to illustrate that which device you want to map this data. Okay, and here if you have, for example, you have two devices attached to, to your host, so you have, you indicate, you specify this as one, as the first device, and the second is, uh, two is the second device, so you can map map the data separately on the on the on the different devices. Okay, this is uh, this is the use of the device cost. Here's an, another example that uh, uh, for the target uh, target data. So in this case, we um, I think this, this okay. This case is similar to the, pre the previous case, but I have some. Uh, Assignment statement that it can illustrate what's what's going on here. So as I mentioned, that map is just uh, means the in out, and that means in the, at the when they enter the target, the target data region. So then whatever being initialized from the host, it will be available on the on the ta uh, target device, the target region. So at the end of the target region, target data region, sorry, target data region, that is being if the array zero is being modified. And then whatever the value will be available on the host. That means we have a copy in at the beginning and copy out. First of all, not necessarily copy, because uh, one thing I didn't mention at the, uh, at the beginning that, and even though we have, we, in, the, in the model that we have uh, memory on the uh, data, memory on the, on the uh, target device and memory on the host device, the implementation is allowed to share the storage between the, the, the two data. Okay, so there's a, there's, there's a, the spec is kind, is kind of flexible enough that, that uh, we, have, we can have different kinds of implementation. implementation. Okay. So, so that means uh, I try to avoid to say copy because not, not just a copy, a transfer, maybe transfer is a better term. Yeah. So, um, so the second, uh, the next example is very similar to the, just some variation of the, 
if this is a in what we call the map type here, so what we indicate is that I just want to transfer data in. Okay, whatever is being modified on the on the on the, the target uh, on the target region, uh, the target data inside the target region, I don't care on the host. Okay, so uh, whatever, just I just want to need to use the initial uh, value of the array on the date on on the on the device on target device and uh, in the target data region. So that means that it's only, there's only trans transfer in, there's no transfer out of here. So that means if you want to reference the the, the array zero here, so you will, you will get back the value that as that, that the value that you get before you enter the dark target data region. Okay. So this is just. Uh, so. Of course, the reason why I'm doing this is that we don't need the data outside on the host. And then I, I just say one transfer here, okay? So this is how it's composed, uh, transfer, oh, it's transfer is oh, just a reverse, right? And when, when you enter here, I don't do anything. I just, I just allocated the array zero on the, on the uh, target data region. And then that's uninitialized. And can I make use of data, I don't care. Uh, but at the end, I want to use, I want to get the result. Okay, so I, I need the transfer out, uh, transfer out. That means I need the, I, I need the out type here. Map type is out, and I need to transfer out the data and then use it in here. So this is the whole idea. Um, the next one is, uh, the, it's very similar, but uh, sometimes uh, it's confusing, but it's just very similar uh, construct. It's called target construct. Uh, the major difference between the target construct is that uh, topic target construct is a superset of target target data construct. Okay, so target data construct is just create a new device data environment, and then pretty much tell the compiler, okay, allocate the appropriate data on the on the device, on the target device, and and just do, doing not is not doing any execution on the on the on the um, target device, but target construct is uh, doing both. Target data, the target construct is uh, create a new data environment. I mean, allocating all the appropriate data, and then do the execution, do the actual offloading, and execute on the device. Okay, this is this is all the target construct is. So, the picture is with the same, and the construct is uh, the directive is different. And what it does is just uh, uh, this uh, the, the the enclosed block of the code. Uh, inside the target directory, it will be offload, offload and ex executed on the target device if the target device is available. Okay. Otherwise, it will be executed on the CP uh, on, the, on the on the host. So the uh, what the compiler does, we need to do a lot of magic in here. Okay. So what it needs to do is just generate this code. That's the uh, general code. This code specific for target, and then and then find some way to offload to the to the to the device. Okay. So. Um, Yeah, this is pretty much what the target uh, construct is doing in here. And remember that the, tar the target construct is uh, create a new device environment, a data environment, as well as executing the, the, the code on the, on the target device. Okay. Yes? How do you specify on which device the target code should be running? If there's multiple devices? There's a device class. You, you, can, you can specify device cost, uh, uh, and if it's not, uh, that's the default device setting in the, in the specification that the implementation will provide what is the default device. So here's the syntax, it's similar, without, just without a data keyword. And as I mentioned before, it create a, a device data environment and execute a construct on the, on the, same, on the same device. Okay, this is a superset of the previous construct, the target data construct. So uh, there are three classes. There's, a, there's the device class. You can mention, you can specify if you have multiple devices. You can specify, specify the uh, as, as a certain device. If it is, if it is not specified, and and there's a default setting by the uh, uh, by the defined by the implementation. That is just which device you you should use. Okay. So there's also map cost and also if cost. If cost is the same idea that it uh, in the in the other. Uh, open MP construct. Okay. Okay. Here's a here's an example, a uh, very simple example. So uh, pretty much, uh, I I just want to offload this guy 
uh, this sort of computation to a target. Okay, just uh, just enclose this, wrap this by the open ta open target. Yeah. Okay, everything works. Okay, uh, it will work basically. And uh, that, but uh, you will notice that there's some, there some traffic. So I mean, just the transfer in transfer seems to be too much. Okay, so probably you need to reduce it. The one, the reason why transfer and transfer by default, you need to look up. I mean, you need to consult the. There, are, because there are some rules in the specification that was the implicit mapping and all these, all these things. So, but in here, what's what's going on is that uh, if you have open target, so you are implicitly map the the BRL, ARL, and 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 all this into the target because you are using it in the target, and then that implicit mapping uh, uh, by default is in out. What it means that you need to transfer. A, uh, ARL and BRL into the into the target in order to uh, uh, operate this uh, computation. So it is that, and then after that, you need to transfer it out by default. So that means you will see a lot of the transfer in transfer out in here. So I have some here. So if you look, if you look, this, uh, you notice there's some some data inside the the loop, the target uh, construct. This uh, it's just a reference only. It's just a read only. Okay, I just read. I just need to just transfer it in. I don't care about what's going on uh, afterward. Right. So you 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 need to, and then you need to kind of uh, fine tune this uh, kind of uh, data mapping. So. The other way to, to use it is that you use, uh, I will introduce this notation later on and just treat it as a, as a array section. Okay. This is a, this is a brand, this is a new, this is another new thing in the OpenMP4. And just treat it as like this is an array started from uh, index zero with length, length n. Okay. This is the whole idea. So anyway, so what we, I'm doing here, because I know that the C is only reference only, read only. And BRR is uh, read only in inside the, the, the target region, so I, I just need to transfer it. Make sure that is the the initial value, the the value of BRR and C, are uh, available. So I just transfer it. But however, I, since I'm updating ARR, so I need to uh, transfer in and out. Okay, this is uh, then we you can reduce the, the transfer of the BRR out of it, right? You just want to transfer it. Okay, this. The, the, this is very important when, you, when we are dealing with target region and target construct or data, uh, uh, target data construct, because precisely mapping the data helps the performance quite a bit, quite a lot. Yeah. And also that uh, some of the device uh, and, uh, has a very limited uh, storage, so you need, we need to be careful, I mean, how much you do you transfer or whether this is really necessary to transfer. Okay, so this, uh, this is also uh, part of the consideration here, and I uh, bought this uh, fancy stuff here. So anyway, so one more. This is the same, the same thing, and then uh, this, of course, is a different. is a Fortran uh, uh, example. So uh, I'll quickly go through this. Uh, quickly, I'll just get, skip this, and this is essentially the same example. And another thing is that this is another. This is another same example that I need to kind of uh, precisely mapping the, the right stuff onto it to reduce the, the, the data tra transfer between the host and device. And also uh, that you, otherwise the, the, the transfer will overwhelm the performance gain that you, you will get from the, from the device, from the target device. Okay. So this is, uh, so one will ask that, okay, we have a target construct and we have Target data construct. It seems to be they are doing the same thing. Well, other than, other than this, uh, the the spec say they are doing different things, but it looks like this that they are doing the same mapping data onto the onto the the target device. But uh, if you look at this example, that you, that you have um, uh, you have two target regions in your routine. Okay, somehow you need you require two target regions. Okay, so. Uh, one is doing this, and uh, the first loop, K, K loop, and AR, KU to something, if it, uh, update initial KR. And the other, I want to offload the other part. Is, okay, I want, need to update the KR, uh, the, the array KR1, sorry, uh, AR1, 
and uh, use another target uh, region to do it. So um, the problem is that you, if you want to do this, okay, fine, it will work. I can tell you that it will work. So the problem is here is that and just within this two target region, you will see a lot of data mapping in and out. Okay. In here, you are you're seeing AR is moving, being, uh, AR1 is being mapped in and then mapped out. And later on, probably maybe a maybe short time later, you want to use that data again. Okay. So you need to, you need to map it into, into the, 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 de, the target device again. Right. So, uh, but, but in between, assume that in between, I, I, I'm not touching AR1 here. Okay, so that means that that uh, the mapping out and the mapping map out here and the map in here is kind of a little bit redundant, right? Because the data residing on the target device already have what what I want. So that means I can the the, the second target region can can be used that data on there. So the idea of the target the, the target data construct comes in handy in here. So what it what it has what it has here that uh, in here I have a target data here. I, I already say that okay, this target data inside the target data we we already allocate AR one in here. Okay. So what this whole thing is that I will I will preserve the whole thing. This is in the under the, the whole device that, that take uh, sorry uh, pres preserve the data on the target, and then when I try to reuse in the second target region, so I, I can reuse it right away, so that it will save me the transfer. Okay, so it's a whole whole idea of the, tar the target data. Okay, I already say that they introduced they introduced, they introduced uh, that uh, issue. Um, that is the case that uh, when you try to use the uh, uh, use uh, use a C and or C purpose array on the map class, that also always an issue. You got uh, in the base language C or C plus uh, plus. Uh, the array is basically just upon the map to a, a storage, okay, and a, a, a contiguous storage. So in here, there's, there's, uh, if you if you look at this, if I try to use the map class. On a, a very uh, use it as a star star match, and we passing in as a star match passing in, and try to use it in here, the pro and then we try to map this guy to the uh, to the, the target device. So the problem is here is I yeah I can I can map it, but I don't know how much the memory, how much the storage I map because there's no length or size information on this just this single pointer. Okay, so we need to invent a way that. We need to uh, inform the compiler that uh, what's the size of the array that I want to map it onto the onto, onto the target. So this is the whole thing that we need to introduce some Fortran-like array syntax. If you are familiar with Fortran array syntax or Fortran Fortran array language, is a very rich uh, uh, array language that can be, can be very expressive and very flexible in express uh, portion of the array. So let's ask the Take a kind of a side route into the, the different the different topic, and then we'll come back to the device construct. So, and the, then the language community decided, okay, this is the right time that we need to introduce uh, some kind of array uh, section syntax in C and C++, even though the base language does not have such things. Okay. So, uh, as a side note, as actually the C community has been considering this. Uh, this array syntax into the their next revision whenever that is, so uh, so we will see that this is this is also uh, safe to introduce into it. So the, the idea is that we try to have some syntax to express uh, a portion of the uh, C or C plus plus array. So we have uh, such a syntax with uh, this. Uh, this uh, if you are familiar with Fortran uh, Fortran array language, is uh, it can be very confusing because. Because Fortran is always the lower bound, upper bound, and stripe. Okay, lower bound, upper bound, and stripe. In C, it's the lower bound, length, and stripe. Lower bound, length, and stripe. And we we we, we feel that it's more natural for the C programmer. The lower bound, length, and stripe. Uh, anyway, that's we 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 give up on stripe. But anyway, we we just uh, do uh, say lower bound, length, uh, and 
and uh, express the, uh, the, the array section. So um, since this is not part of the base language, the C standard language, so we, we can only, uh, we, the spec only allows this array section expression syntax uh, to be on the, on the OpenMP clause only. Okay, there's only a few clauses allowing to have the array section. So, so we just try to avoid the, the conflict with the, with, the, with the base language. language. So the uh, so usage is that uh, mother, uh, so this is, a, this is a syntax, a lower bound, and if there's lower bound, colon, and nothing, and the square bracket, close square bracket, that means the lower bound and to the end of the, of the array. And then if there's a length only, we assume that the, the beginning is zero, okay? Uh, so it's only allowed for on a cer certain clauses, and uh, the, the, the map clause that, that we have seen, we have also seen one or two examples of this. This is a map clause we can allow a portion of the array in, uh, map into the, the target device, the target region. And also that later on, you will see the target update clause, uh, the construct, or the, uh, uh, target update construct, you will see the to and from clause is uh, allowed to use the array syntax, the depend clause in the task, the depends uh, feature, you also have this, uh, allowed to use this uh, syntax. I can give you some example of this. So uh, just a uh, simple example, we have array decay of A10, and if we have zero colon six, that means zero to five. Uh, colon six, that means the same thing from starting from zero, or assume starting from zero. And uh, if we have uh, four colon three, that means we're starting from element four. And, and uh, so the, the fifth element, I mean, uh, A4, and to, to a six. And three, the length is three. Six, that means six to the N, colon, that means the whole array, okay? So um, we also have kind of zero length array and also the contiguous and non-contiguous uh, situation. When you are dealing with section, you're bound to have contiguous and non-contiguous situation, okay? So just quickly go through that. Um, And let's come back to the target and target data construct, okay? I haven't done yet. <laughs> so that is the, then is uh, try to solve the previous problem, right? Uh, we pass the star matching, we have no, we have no clue that what the size is, it's the compiler has no clue how, how, how much space that need to be allocated on the, on the, on the target device. So that, that's why, and then that's why we go to that uh, array syntax problem, uh, 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 issue, solve it, come back to see, okay, this, this, this is the way that we can do it. So uh, we know the size of the array will be, will be n, so that means I can tell the compiler that, okay, uh, I want to mat, uh, map the mat uh, array to the, the target device, and this is the size, this is the starting point I want to, and this is the size I want to map, okay? So this is the, the whole idea that we, that's why we, one of the ideas we need to introduce array syntax, uh, array section syntax into, uh, into the, the C part, C and C part of the, of the specification, okay? And everything stays the same, just uh, yeah, there's a, there's a typo we already defined now. So um, I should map, uh, it's fine, anyway. So there's a, I mentioned there's a if clause, okay? So uh, that you can always uh, provide a condition that, okay, for to a certain condition, I don't want to offload to the target device certain condition I want to do it, okay? So there's a if clause for why, for why I do it. Um, the condition may be, there are problems are too big, okay? For example, this, this, this is the reverse of this condition, but anyway, if, if, if Matt, uh, if I put 500 elements of the, of, of, of the array onto the, de on the device, it, it's, it's kind of too overwhelming. It's just kind of, the, 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 somehow the storage is, is less than 500. So there's no point to do it. Okay, so we, we need to kind of do, it, do everything back onto the CPU on the host. So if this is uh, a smaller than 500, I, I will do it, I'll do the same thing. I, I will do the, the, the offload, offloading thing. So, okay, this is the, the way to use the if condition. And this is another case that, uh, as I said, that you, this is the, also the specification allows that as, uh, as a host attached to more than one device. If you have more than one device, you can, of course, you want to exploit it. 
and it is is if they are available. So and the target construct is also allow you to do uh, the this thing because of the device cost. Okay, I just I want to illustrate how we can use the device cost. In here, uh, I have the same problem. I mean the same problem as before. But I want to, since uh, I, I'm told that I, I, the system has two devices now, two devices now, I want to use it. So I can, I can change my code into using the two devices. I basically I split the, the matrix into two, and then into two pieces, one piece, uh, each piece is on one device. So basically I, I can use this uh, device class here and uh, set, set up a loop and then uh, chunk the iteration space and then the first space, the first iteration space, uh, the first part of the iteration, uh, iteration space, put it on device one, a uh, device zero in this case, yeah, device zero, device zero, and then the the second in device one, and then do it here, and I can gain some kind of parallelism here, okay, because the two devices can execute, can compute at the same time in parallel, okay. This is I can gain that parallelism, I gain some parallelism, split the code, piece by computation in two parts, and then put it on two devices, uh, but on on each device, I still kind of uh, using the sequential loop. Okay, I still using a, a sequential loop to ex to to execute the 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 uh, execute the, the loop iteration uh, uh, on the device sequentially. Okay, so remember that I, as I said that each device can have multiple threads. Okay, there's an opportunity there, opportunity there. I can further exploit it. So. Um, So one way is to, to is to to do to do it like uh, uh, I, I can create the same uh, the target device and map uh, target uh, region and map the appropriate things into the onto the tar target and then I can use the parallel uh, uh, create a parallel region in this case parallel four because it's a for loop parallel four to uh, further par parallelize the loop on the device. Okay, so this is. Uh, the whole, the whole idea that I can, I, I can have. Some, uh, in this case, uh, I just, I just kind of exploit the parallelism on the, on, on the device, and then I can have a, a kind of speed up in this case. Okay, so you notice that all the little red is in red. That means they're executing, they're working. Okay. So what you can see in here is a very important concept here. So inside the target region. You can basically you can have the whole OpenMP program here, in a sense, because you can create a parallel region, and you can create a parallel for, or parallel do in Fortran, or parallel other kind of workshop sections, including task. You can have the whole entire OpenMP program here. So this is a kind of a, uh, this is where the complexity comes in. Okay, I'll further further show you. Or what kind of complexity is that? Okay. Here's another example to um, to further illustrate the, the point that I think this is pretty much the same example as as, uh, as uh, before. But in this case, I introduced kind of combine the two previous example. One is the if I have uh, I have multiple devices, the other is I have okay I have one device, and I have multiple threads on the device. Now I combine together, I can gain one more level of parallelism in here. So in here is that okay I know that I have two devices, both are available to me. I know that uh, we are, I have multiple threads, more than one thread on the on, on each device. I mean target device. Then I I I'll do some crazy thing now. So uh. The parallel, I create a parallel region of uh, of a uh, of a thread of, of a team of two threads. Okay, I just have two devices. So and then I chunk the again. Okay, I need to chunk the. I need to do some more work. I need to chunk my iteration space into the appropriate size. And I I I need to chunk it according to the 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 thread number, the thread ID. And then if I when I chunk it, and then I will send the, send the data to the to the to each device. Because I don't need the whole, the whole uh, array, the whole matrix on the on the device. So that that particular pieces, and of course I need to be careful. I need to kind of map it back to the host. Otherwise, I, I can do the crazy computation and I don't, I don't get the answer. 
So I, I map it, okay, map, I map it to a device and to a particular device, and then I do the parallel, par, uh, parallel for in here, okay? So, so I, have, I have multiple level of parallelism here, parallelism here. I have two devices, target device, I exploit it, chunk it to two pieces and run it on, on each device. And then further down, I, I further, down, further in on the device, I, I exploit more parallelism on that device. Okay, you can see, hope, hope that you can see multiple level of parallelism here. Okay. okay. So it's a very powerful kind of uh, combination, composition of the uh, uh, constructs, yes. So can you use this to also work around the, the blocking that's necessary <coughs> when interacting with the accelerator? Can we have one thread that's devoted to interacting with the accelerator and while the other thread does computations on your CPU, so your CPU is always in use? Yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah, but you need to do a lot of uh, blocking work uh, on that. And also that, that uh, the computation speed of the CPU and GPU may be may vary. So there's a different kind of cost consideration. You okay. did say earlier that the CPU essentially lays the, the <coughs> that's, that's correct, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, you can further exploit on the, C, on, the, on the CPU side. And there are some further construct you can exploit something on the CPU side, yeah. Sorry, that, that not, that, that's not, yeah. but on that thing, you, you need to kind of do a little bit more work to how to chunk the, 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 the data and then kind of uh, put some consideration on that, but the different speed on the CPU and the devices. Yeah. Can you ask for the number of devices to make it more dynamic? Yes. Yes, there's an there's a API, one-time one API to set how uh, many devices I have, yeah. I already introduced this tar uh, target update uh, uh, construct. So this is uh, to update the construct uh, from uh, either from the host to the device or from the device to the host, okay. So, um, so this is the whole idea is to mix, the, mix the, the, the data between the host and the device consistent. This is the whole, whole idea. And um, this is a standalone directive. That means there's no code kind of uh, uh, attached to it. And there are two classes at least. I mean, I mean the more impo the important, the other are just the same. I mean, device class and the if class. The to and from classes mean to the device or from the device. So uh, how to use it? And similar to one of the ex uh, early examples that I used, I just got built on those, uh, that examples is that I have a, uh, a uh, target data map, uh, sorry, target, target data uh, region, okay, from here to here. So I mapped the appropriate, uh, okay, anyway, this example is taken from the, the open and big sample documentation. So you will see very familiar if you, if you, if you go into that example documentation. And so if you have two, uh, okay, then you have, uh, you have two target region, you wanna do some uh, similar stuff that we, we have done, uh, we just uh, did that uh, in the early examples. So each, we have two target region, we have parallel two and do some update on PI, and from VI, uh, VI so V1, so V1I and V2I, the, the two uh, array uh, vectors in a sense in this case. So in between, I want to do some uh, uh, further initializing, okay? Remember that this, this call statement is inside the target data. Uh, this, call, this call is executed on the host. So that means whatever update here, this, this V1 and V, V2 is just uh, updated to the host data, okay? The device, the target device doesn't see it. And then we need to update it. Uh, that's, that's, why, that's why the target data, and then we can use it in the later target region. Right. Okay. So this is a target data region. Okay. And then and I use the data. Okay. Just map it into here and use it and then do some uh, computation here. And then at this point, I want to initialize the V1, V2 again. However, this call statement is being executed on, to, on, the, on the host. Okay. This is more appropriate in this case, more appropriate to, to be executed on the host. And I want to let the device know that this is being updated. And I want them to have the up-to-date values. So I need to execute the target update two in order to uh, update the, the VM to on the device. And then they can use it accordingly, okay? So as I mentioned earlier, the, the, yeah, maintaining the data between the host device and the target device is, is very important in, in, in mo most of the time. And at the same time, and 
uh, well, naively, you can always do the transfer, but the transfer will hurt you at the end. So that means you need to have a, have a very fine balance and very uh, precise data to the compiler what to do about the data. This is the this is very important. It's, it's, it's even more important when, when, when we do the just the, the 3.1 open MP level kind of uh, parallelization. Yes, you need to care about the temporary view of the on the thread of uh, uh, temporary view and the uh, and the real memory uh, data. Um, but this is more important. You need to map it. You need, need to need to do very precise work on this in order to kind of uh, really uh, reduce all the data transfer. You have some questions here. Oh, no, okay. Okay. So another set of construct because there's a whole family of this construct is is related to each other. I, I just want to introduce it at the same time. Um, this is called declare target construct. It says uh, uh, what it does is that um, if you have uh, if you have some global variable in this case, uh, this is, is a global variable like a module variable in Fortran. Uh, static variable in, in C or C++ uh, uh, file scope where variable and then and and you need to use it in the in the target device you need to declare as a target uh, in the target de uh, declare target uh, directive okay so this is all this uh, is for and also uh, if you want to call a function inside the target uh, region so we you need again that target that function you need to compile that function that has the code gen being generated for the target uh, architect, right? Then you need to let the compiler know that okay, I want this one this function uh, to be uh, to have a, a device uh, code being generated for this. Okay, so I, I'll give you some example for that. So this is a it's kind of a, let the compiler know that okay, I want to create a, a target version of this of this function or, or this uh, global variable. So notice that uh, the syntax is quite different. Okay, it's, this is not a typo here. You, when you see n something, n thing, it will see the properties. This is a four trans syntax. No, this is the other way. They, they are the other way around. Okay, this is the the C syntax. This is the very first C, C syntax in the OpenMP specification that you have a pound primer OpenMP and DK target. Okay, so pay some attention to it. We have a long discussion uh, on whether we should introduce this kind of thing here, but anyway, we did. <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah, this is this this uh, this uh, there's some uh, reason for that because uh, we need to uh, wrap these things around. We cannot use the curly bracket something like that. Uh, I don't remember the, the actual uh, reason for that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's do some example here. Okay. Um, now remember that I mentioned that okay if I if I okay don't worry about the first part first and then I have a compute uh, routine here so do the usual stuff as before and now I want to kind of uh, common this code of uh, 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 that this since they are doing the same thing okay use a little routine to do it okay so yes uh, this is easy to be done but uh, the the compiler need to generate code for the target. For uh, for the first ad, first at this routine, okay. The the only way otherwise the comp compiler would do, will have no nothing to, to to call because they would because the the architect between the CPU and the, the, the GPU for example is, is quite different. I mean the code generator is quite different. Okay, so you need to tell the compiler that I need a special version of that for that that routine. So this is how the declare target comes in. Okay, so uh, it. Then you use a decay, decay target to declare. The, I mean, in the, in the function body, you just use a decay target and end decay target to to tell compiler when the compiler generate code, generate two versions. Okay. At this, so I say two at least two versions. Okay. Um, so one version is for CPU. Okay. So the reason why that you well the compiler can take the risk not to generate the CPU uh, uh, code because uh, if the, the, the risk is that is that we always assume that the target is always available, but this is always the case. There are always possibility that the target is not available. I need to execute that piece of code on CPU. Then that routine, the CPU version of uh, CPU version of that routine has to be available in the in the in the executable. Okay, so that means that that's why I say this. At least two. 
Okay. Okay. So first of all, the compiler generate a CPU version of this fast add, put it in the object file, and also uh, this is one of the of the procedure, uh, one of the, the possible procedure, and then it's also generate as uh, a, ta uh, a device version, a target device version of it, like GPU version or NVIDIA version or whatever you you, call, you, you, you like to have, and uh, for the for the target. Okay. So that means and then put it to the to the final executable with some magic. Okay. So so that means when we call it, if it is actually being called in a target de device, okay, it will, it will call the the real the, the, the appropriate version of the of the of, of the routine. Okay. So this is how this the target data works. This is give more information to the compiler what to do in terms of the code generation. Okay. Uh, this is a Fortran version of it. As I mentioned, that the Fortran version is uh, is uh, is uh, I mean this Fortran syntax is quite different from the from the C and C++ syntax, it's just uh, we're trying to just have a decay target directive, standalone stand -alone directive, and we just uh, yeah, there's a little more Fortran detail in the, in here. It's just a stick directive here. The compiler can generate uh, the CPU version of uh, fast add, and also or the, the the GPU version of the fast add. Okay, this is uh, the Fortran syntax. Um, <clears throat> It's another version of the uh, uh, Fortran syntax because Fortran has the more fancy stuff and module and module procedure. If you're familiar with Fortran, you know that. And and we also have the we also declare this uh, module variable C uh, to be used on the uh, target device. So I need to declare in the module like this. This is kind of show you another example for that. And that's some real code here. So I just want to illustrate it. It's uh, taken from this paper, uh, and uh, this is how uh, that's how the target and target data uh, with uh, parallel for being used in the, one of the, the typical Jacobi examples, and this, uh, we have a whole bunch of. So we, you notice that there are a lot the, the whole the whole map class is is uh, is pretty long, and then this is a uh, this is a good thing in the sense that you you are providing very precise. Information to the to a compiler that what to map, what to not, not what not to map in a sense, and and then uh, use this all this. Yeah, I won't, I won't elaborate on this. I just kind of show you just this is kind of real life example. You can you can apply the target data, target uh, construct, and some parallel into the the real life example. Yes. Uh, sorry, I have a question back on the update uh, yeah. feature. Um, from from the way it looks, um, I'm wondering if if so I'm in some function, and then that has the target region in it, and it can call the updates if it wants, but it doesn't seem like any other function can call update to that um, to the target, even if it's still within the data or the the data region. Is that the case? So your question is the. If you call the target update, like, like in this in this code right here, <coughs> only the subroutine vec mult, only in the scope of that, are you allowed to call target update, or you know if I'm in a, if I have a function call somewhere in there, can I call target update from that function using the same variable names perhaps? Yeah, of course you need to pass the variable there, and then you can call that. So if if I pass those variables. To a different function, I can call target update. Basically, you outline these two lines into a function, right? In a sense. Um, because I mean, if you do that, I mean, the only way it knows how to map it is from the names, um, which is, which is a totally different kind of, of scoping than what you would normally see, at least in C. I need to double check on this the rule of the uh, whether this uh, target update is lexical or not. I need to double check on this, okay. and and basically. Uh, 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 I'm not expert in the, that one-time implementation on that, but anyway, I think that's one time we we'll keep a keep check, use a table uh, to keep track all the variable that they have seen on the uh, on the device, and then they will just match the address on this. Okay. I think this is this may be one this may be one of the I need to double check on that. Yeah. Yes. Um, does the target update apply to all the devices that have that data, or you have to specify which device? Um, 
to update. For example, let's say there are five devices, target devices, and V1 and V2 is on all five of them. Then issuing this target update, would it update V1, V2 on all of them? Okay, so uh, quick question, yeah. Um, Target update to and then without the device class being specified, it's just uh, we'll, we'll just update the, the default device that is implementation defined into the look of the implementation. If you have more than one, uh, one device, uh, you better have the device one, device two, that kind of uh, specified device. Yeah. Okay, so target, target data, and target update is basically the first step to get to the kind of GPU or or target device uh, uh, offloading. So we have another, as I said, uh, as I said very earlier in the execution model, that uh, we have kind of teams concept. Uh, the whole team concept is, uh, is uh, uh, was proposed by Nvidia. If you are familiar with the Nvidia architecture, you you see why they propose it. Yeah, it's just, it's very uh, uh, actually it's really exploit the, the the architecture very well. As I said, that they have uh, the flat block. Okay. They can, they can exploit different level of, uh, one more level of parallelism. So the team's construct is pretty much the, uh, based on that idea. And also we see that, that of course, the committees, committees saw that this is uh, also a, a good way to express some certain kind of, uh, certain class, not only one kind, certain class of architecture. So uh, the team construct is, uh, okay, first of all, the team construct is only allowed to be uh, specified inside a target construct, okay? And that means this is the, all the uh, target device stuff, okay? And you cannot have a parallel and then teams, okay? That's, that, 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 that will, this is an error, this is invalid. So teams construct is all built on, built on the target device uh, idea. So uh, if you have teams construct, this is all the syntax, and, and you create a leak of uh, threat teams, okay? There are multiple threat teams. And the master thread of each team execute the region. Okay, this is pretty much similar idea, not the same, similar idea of the parallel region. Okay, and then also this allows us to exploit one more level of uh, uh, parallelism. And so, and there's no implicit barrier at the end of, of, of a team's construct. Okay, and as I mentioned before, that there has to be in the team, is, is between inside ta the target construct, and actually, Lexically, that's important, very right? lexically. And also that in between the teams, sorry, in between the targets, directive and teams directed, there shouldn't be any statement in between. Okay, that means you have to be side by side. This is, uh, this is in the rule. If you look up the spec, it's, it's there, okay. Um, so there's a whole bunch of uh, clauses uh, here, and I will explain a few of them because the private, first private is the, the share, and also that idea is just uh, similar to the, um, uh, to the to the to the parallel uh, construct. Yeah, of course, there's some some difference in there, but the, the whole idea is just is, is very similar. Okay, uh, let me start with an example. If I think. Okay, okay, one more one more thing there. So uh, there's also come with some uh, uh, runtime API uh, routine. Uh, just uh, we can inquire the. A number of uh, the the, num the number of teams, and also the team number. Okay, and remember that we can have multiple teams, not only a single. If you uh, if you have target uh, region without teams inside that, that means you have a target region of one team. Okay, there's only one team being created. This is by default. Okay, let's let's look at some example. Um, so. The same old example that we have been using, and we have compute a function, and we do the target offload the the the, the, the computation to the to a target, and you we map the appropriate data as before, and so inside the target uh, region, I create the teams of two. I mean, two teams. Okay, okay, two teams here. So that means uh, in the target region, I have two teams here. So, uh, so I will just uh, chunk the okay. I mapped uh, look at the I mapped the whole matrix match into the into the target device because they are just one device here, right? Back to the guy, and then these two teams share that data, 
And then it is, and, and then I, inside the teams, because I have two teams, I, uh, with, uh, in the teams, I, I chunk the, uh, the matrix into two pieces, and I use the two teams to, to run it, okay? This is a little bit artificial, but I just want to illustrate the concept here, okay? So, uh, so we just do, do the same, about, uh, same uh, operation, computation, and then do the, uh, get, the, get, the, get, the, get the computation here, okay? So there's that kind of uh, parallelism we can achieve here, okay? So notice that you, for probably you already noticed that, that uh, we are used, since that there are multiple threads on one team, and then basically in this one, I'm still using one thread to execute this do loop here. Okay. So, get the thing. Okay. So, um, just I will go. We will try try the, the same exercise. Okay. Since uh, each team has a multiple thread. Okay, I, why don't we just explore it? Okay, I can I can just <coughs> stick the stick the parallel do in here and then further exploit the parallel sum. Okay, and then that means I just um, utilize all the threads on on both teams here. Okay, the same approach as before and pretty much the but it's kind of a bit different kind of uh, setting here. Probably you can see how many levels of uh, parallelism we can exploit now, now. If we have multiple devices and multiple CPUs and all these things, okay? So things are getting complicated here, <laughs> okay? Okay, so remember the teams. We can, inside a target region, we can create multiple teams. And each, each team work independently, of course. And then each team has multiple threads, and we can, and also that we we are also introduce uh, some construct that can kind of work sharing something among the teams. Okay, we call it the distributed construct. Okay, so uh, the distributed construct is just, just, just uh, uh, so similar to the work sharing do or work sharing for construct. Is a uh, distributed construct only apply for the for loop or do loop, and just uh, the, whole, the whole idea is just to uh, distribute the, 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 the workload among the teams, and then each team will execute on, on their threads, okay? So uh, this, everything is the same here, and then the, there's some usual uh, uh, class here. We also have a collapse class here, uh, because it only apply on the, on the loop, so that there's a possibility it can collapse the, the nested loop in there. And uh, this uh, schedule is uh, for the, since this is, uh, 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 there will be some scheduling for the, for the, for the, for the loop. You are allowed to do it. But in, uh, in this, uh, in the 4.0 release, uh, release, we only uh, uh, support the static scheduling only. Okay, see how it works. Um, yeah. Same old example, a little bit different. This is a dot product example. It's a kind of uh, a dot from, uh, again, from the OpenMP examples document, I think. Yeah. And <clears throat> just do a uh, usual sum here. And this is what happening. I, I, the same, same thing. I map the whole data, the, the data uh, uh, array B and array C into the, the target. And then here, I, I create two teams. Num teams are specified too. And then and I want to do a reduction. And I know and then I also distribute the the this J loop among the teams. Okay? Distribute this J loop among the teams. And then further within within the teams, I want to uh, do this parallel do reduction within the teams. Okay. And then just to get, get the result later on. So the whole the, the, the idea here is that that means this distribute this distribute uh, construct basically uh, chunk this loop into two well, into two basically because this is a static uh, scheduling by default and that means the parallel do i one to twenty to twenty five will be on one team the parallel do i twenty five uh, to fifty one the five hundred on on this team okay and then each team will, will execute their parallel parallel loop. 
Okay. <clears throat> Got the paradox on here, there. All right. Okay. I pretty much this is uh, is it, this is uh, yeah this this is uh, this is a device construct. Uh, any question about device construct before I move on the CMD construct? Yes. It seems like a lot of what you're adding is like. Um, Ideas that would be better supported with like language syntax. Um, so what? Sorry. Sort of? That would be better supported as part of the language syntax rather than in addition to these two languages. What was the decision to keep going in that and continuing to add on to them rather than I don't know, making your own? Uh, first of all, the OpenMP committee is not the C, C++ or Fortran standard committee. So we, uh, and one of our, our principles is just not to add any to the existing uh, language, base language. We are not adding new syntax to the base language. That's why we take on the Pragma approach or the common directory approach in Fortran. Okay, so this is to continue on this, this Pragma approach to give instruction to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the compiler to do whatever we want, want the compiler to, to, to do. Um, Another thing is that uh, uh, I think this is also kind of a, a, a discussion, probably, probably maybe later on, as, as more comments on it. Because um, within the community, whether we should go let the standard community to move on to add their, their stuff that would do the, the similar things. And uh, one thing that we will miss is that at, uh, the advantage of using the directive or primary approach is you, you, you can port some legacy code or existing code. To, uh, to parallelize those code, okay? And probably you work on some large code that you don't want to touch. And if you add language, uh, 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 use a language approach, language syntax approach, you, you will miss that uh, opportunity to optimize some of the legacy code that you don't want to touch. You don't want to change the, and any of the syntax. You just want, the, the best you can do is just insert some directive into the syntax. So the, the OpenMP kind of directive approach is just that advantage. You can, you can allow, allow some uh, uh, some user to kind of uh, 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 insert uh, 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 insert the parameters or directives into existing code and get the parallels. Okay. So anyway, I think back to your original questions. Uh, my, my my view is that uh, we are just basically continues our kind of parameter or directive approach to exploit the, the the latest architecture and exploit more parallels from the latest architecture. Okay, so uh, we not taking any uh, language syntax because we are we cannot intervene the the language committee kind of uh, space to to change the language. Yeah. This is uh, yeah. Uh, Barbara, do you have anything not? <laughs> um, not really, but uh, <laughs> language processes can be very very slow and cumbersome, especially with with something like Fortran, where there's a lot of vested commercial interests. So. Um, so, so one of the issues I think is is that if we want to do something and remain open a piece, also have a lot of legacy now, so we're not as, as agile as we maybe want to be at times. But um, but it certainly is, is a very slow process getting things into a base language, um, even if you want to. Uh, our attitude, I think, generally in the committees are if if, we, if something does enter language, it's a success. So it's not you know there's no competition there. Um, the other thing is we're trying to support all the languages in the same way, so that kind of also constrains us to try and figure out what features we want and to move on. But as you can imagine, there's a huge discussion on exactly what features to do because we're also a finite number of people. So we'll perhaps leave it there for now so that you can wrap up, but we can also come back and talk about that. Uh, your question is right on time for this construct. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Time to ask this. Discuss because the CMD construct vectorization is, is has been discussed in I think in a lot of different language communities many many times, and uh, and to introduce some uh, vector syntax in there, I think you can see whether it's successful or not successful. But anyway, uh, uh, this is kind of kind of uh, some interaction between the language and the uh, OpenMP spec. But uh, let's move on. Um, 
CMT construct, I, I noticed that one of the uh, earlier uh, speakers already mentioned about the CMT con construct support in the Intel compiler. And, and I will kind of quickly go through probably you have, you have some idea about, about that. Um, CMT construct's whole idea is just, uh, 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 so we have seen enough parallels on here, right? We have the CPU, multi-cores, and then now we have attached to the uh, uh, GPU uh, or whatever uh, coprocessor, and then we, we exploit those parallelism. And within the coprocessor or within the GPU, I see a lot more parallelism opportunity. I explore those. So, so we are going down, further, further down to the hardware, close to the hardware level there. So now we see some instruction level kind of parallelism. Why don't we exploit it? So we, that's, that's the whole CMD construct kind of comes in. And so here's, uh, here, here's the, uh, the, the syntax, uh, very simple syntax, and there's a whole bunch of uh, different uh, classes uh, is, uh, being support here. So I will quickly go through some of the important classes. And so the whole idea that this applies to the loops, and if, if you specify a loop as the OMP, OMP CMD, uh, then the, basically you enable the execution of the multiple iteration of the loop concurrent by means of CMD instructions. Okay, so this is kind of a instructor compiler that, okay, I want to vectorize or and I can vectorize this, this loop. And of course, some, even though I, I think most of the uh, architect, modern architects have already have a, a CMD support, but uh, even though if you have some, you need to execute this code, OMP, OMP CMD code onto the, the, the architect that does not support CMD. So it's, it should still work because they will just kind of, uh, you can say ignore it, but basically just execute as as as, as usual. There's no CMD simulation here. Okay. Uh, okay. So again, some terminology uh, um, you'll find it in the spec, and uh, yeah, this uh, I'll, 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 I won't go through it. Just uh, you can look up the spec to find out the terminology. And I just try to dive into the example to see uh, what it means. Okay, so one of the classes that, that we mentioned is uh, the safe lane, safe lane class classes, and so it specifies the the, the length. <clears throat> what it means is no two iteration is equal concurrent with the CMD uh, construct. You can have a greater distance in the logical iteration space than n. Okay, that means they they shouldn't they have far apart. So let's uh, have some. Uh, so we have safe, safe to vectorize with a length of uh, four or less. Okay, this is the maximum. This is a maximum value. It's not guaranteed that you always get four. If you can get maximum four, okay. If the uh, there's a, the compiler may give you uh, the value lower than than than, than four. Whatever the, the compiler thinks is safe to do it. So. Uh, so that means that what it means is that a, for example, this simple example is that a, uh, a zero and a four uh, should not execute concurrently. This is what basically what it says, okay? And what what it means is that is that you can safely since a a and four cannot execute concurrently. That means a from zero to three. You can you can kind of vectorize this this operation, okay, and then pretty much give you one instruction to do it. Oh, where is where is this efficient efficient yes, uh, is, is vectorized vector instruction to, to do this loop, and then from four to the next uh, three of them, and then you can do the uh, another vector instruction to to handle that. So this is the whole idea of this uh, uh, safe length. And uh, the linear class, <clears throat> the linear class is basically just uh, indicate that uh, uh, the, the, the list item, the list, the variable list on the linear class is basically has the same perfect syntax, semantic, and also kind of serve as a, has some first perfect and last perfect semantics as well. Why, why it does is that, and why it does I is increment by one in every iter iteration. <laughs> Type of here iteration. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Um, so what what it means is that if you have a CMD uh, 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 linear m 
colon two, and do all this uh, operation. So what, what is this operation does actually does is a zero two, and then one and all, and then with all, with m increment by one. So increment by two every iteration. So when the when the compiler call the vector uh, instruction, they will take care of this variable. variable. Okay, this is what in there. So then there's a whole bunch of different uh, thing I won't go through it here. And then there's align, we still have to specify the, the maximum alignment. And so uh, the same thing comes with that, that the declare CMD, okay? Uh, rem uh, on the, remember on the ta uh, declare target, so we need the special version of that uh, very, uh, functions. This is also the same for this for here. Uh, declare CMD is, uh, is basically a declare of a function that I want, uh, want, I want to have a vector version of it, okay? So I can specify a whole bunch of different kind of uh, vector version for this uh, thing. And, and also there's uh, some new things coming in, in, the, in, the, in the OpenMP syntax, is that we, have, we can have uh, multiple uh, declare CMD on, uh, on, on a function, okay? If we can specify multiple pound parameter OpenMP declare CMD on a single function, okay? Because uh, some people, some people may want to write code to uh, be portable on different architect, so they, they may want to have a different uh, multiple. So, yes, again, this is a this is a brand new thing in the OpenMP syntax. You can apply multiple uh, parameter onto a, one single thing, and again, we have a long discussion on that. <laughs> Finally, we kind of uh, there's no other way, but no, no other better way to do, to do it. So we just uh, have the, this. Thing. For trying, is it is a bit different. Uh, for trying, you can have uh, include the, the the position name in here, and then you can specify quite a, uh, a bit uh, different in the in the function body. But anyway, this is the whole idea: is that that is to to let the compiler know that I want to have a special version of this guy. Okay, this is the whole idea. And I will quickly go through the classes and and <clears throat> uh, what those seem to. Uh, CMD length means, and this is what basically what you want to have uh, for the for the kind of version of function. For example, if I, want, I declare CMD length four and CMD on function four, and basically what it does is I, I ask the compiler to instruct the compiler to generate uh, uh, one is for the uh, for the uh, for the operation of a four uh, var variables. The other is for the operation of eight variables. Got different two different versions of. Uh, CMD version of the of the routines. Okay. Now we need to do some uh, do a little bit more uh, complex stuff. So CMD is just kind of applied to a loop. I want to synthesize vectorize this loop. Okay. Maybe I, I will just uh, apply the the vector instruction on on. On each set of iterations, in on to to do to to op, to, op, to compute the loop. So, uh, what if I want to combine some kind of uh, 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 parallelism in there? Okay, there is always some parallelism because like if there's a simply simply length equal to sorry, a safe length equal to four, and then I can have uh, four four elements operate uh, uh, concurrent at the same time, uh, concurrently. And but I, if I want to exploit more uh, parallelism out of it, is that I can introduce the I can use the for CMD loop, the loop CMD, CMD, loop CMD construct. That means I combine the work sharing for, remember the parallel for the work sharing for, and for and CMD, okay? So that means I, I want to exploit two levels of parallelism. One is on the CPU level, and the other on the, on the, on the instruction level. So if you're doing an a earlier version of OpenMP, you've got to do the normal for, and then inside there use the whatever compiler CMD line. This is only version four, right? Yeah. This is only version four, yeah. So with, with like version two or three, can you do the OMP four and then do whatever compiler fragment there is for the SIMD? You know if they'll mix or? That, that compiler property is, uh, is the extension to the, to the, to the vendors. Uh, it will really depend on vendors, yeah. yeah. I know that the IBM compiler can do it. Yeah. But I'm not sure about the, the other the other compiler. Uh, yeah. So we now we are exploring two levels of parallelism: so the CPU level and the instruction level. Okay. So 
Uh, so, so this is what it says. Uh, execute concurrent using the CMD instructions and execute in parallel by, by thread in the, in the, uh, in, by the team, okay? So how, how it's done? So first of all, okay, this is very important that, first of all, we apply, uh, we distribute the iteration across the, the, the thread first, implicit task in this case, threads. Okay, so I, uh, I will have some example later on, okay? So, and then the, the each chunks, each chunk that we put on the, try to put on the thread, each chunk, I'll, I'll vectorize the, each chunk individually, okay? So, so in this case, the, remember the order uh, the order cons uh, class, the order constraint is not allowed in this case. Okay, Let, let's go to the example to illustrate this. Um, so we have a very simple loop here. So you try to exploit some parallelism, uh, two levels of parallelism that do CMD or pi, and I have a, uh, a num thread four. Uh, I find a typo here anyway. <laughs> Assume there's a there's a fourth thread here. Num thread is uh, it's only applied to the parallel uh, directives, not applied to the do loop. Okay. So anyway, assume this is a four four uh, fourth thread here, and uh, then I want to do the sampling eight and then do the usual privatization of the sum variable. Um, so, uh, on this uh, here, so. Uh, First of all, so as uh, remember the instruction, but first of all, I chunk the iteration first into the, into, into the team. So since there's a, there are four threads here, and then uh, basically I chunk this into four different uh, let me see. Yes, okay, assume this uh, put it into four chunks. Okay, I'll just assume it for four, four chunks. And then each, each chunk basically is, uh, will execute their, their kind of uh, iteration, the part of the iteration space, okay? And just this example, just for illustration, I find some, some problems in this example anyway. <laughs> so this is, uh, have the iteration, uh, uh, portion of iteration space. So, uh, so for each, so we further kind of, uh, we further uh, vectorize this uh, iteration. That, that is execute that are executed on this thread into the vectorization here in the vector here to kind of uh, have uh, one more level of uh, parallelism. Got the idea? First of all, first of all, we assume that we chunk into four pieces, and then put each piece put on the on the thread. Okay, so each thread will have their own iterations uh, going on, and then within the thread. I further exploit the parallelism in the instruction level, simply level. I just kind of uh, uh, apply the, the safely A in here to further exploit this. this. Yes? Is the purpose of the safe lane to maximize the reuse of cache between the workers? Or? It's mainly that this is the, what, uh, how many, what's the, what the, what's the vector length that you have, basically? How many? Uh, what's the length that is uh, that, that your instruction can handle? Sure, but that would suggest a minimum distance rather than a maximum distance. Because the, the you you can go lower, you cannot go higher. Right? Is that? The, the the text there says that the, the instructions come at a greater distance than the logical literary space. That that means they could be on the each other. The text you mean the spec? The, the spec? The text you in the spell is met. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, let me see. Okay, we read. You don't want the, the vectorization to be on top of. You want to stride it out over the length of the but It sounds like this is something different. I cannot have. Sorry, I have a typo here. This cannot have greater than cannot. This should be cannot. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. Okay, yeah. But you see the part that the, the way that we, we can exploit the parallelism, okay, from the uh, CPU multi-thread level, in this case, multi-thread level, and also the, the instruction level, uh, vectorizing the each, each chunk, okay. Okay, here comes the, 
Uh, so we know that we can have a parallel for or combined parallel for or this kind of composition or combined uh, construction uh, kind of constructs. So if you put all these things together, all the target teams <coughs> distribute parallel do or parallel for, uh, for and and CMD and do, you can have a lot of combination of it. Okay, so I just list a few of them. <laughs> so. So uh, it's all in the spec, you can, you can take a look. Um, so, but uh, when you use it, be careful. And because uh, some of the, I think, the first four, or maybe the first, uh, the first four has, has a little bit different kind of uh, semantic than the, the, the other. Okay, so just read, this, read, read the spec carefully when you try to use a, this kind of combined or uh, composite uh, uh, construct, okay? But, but you can see the the the, help, the, the level of uh, parallelism here. For, for example, the, the bottom one. <coughs> so uh, this is only in the on the target device. Okay, it's only on the target device. You don't even, it, you can add one more level of parallel some from on the top. So that means in the target device you can separate the, the whole target into teams, and then distribute this among the teams, and then within the teams you can parallel it. And within, within the parallel for each chunk, you can synthesize it. Okay. I hope that you can appreciate the power of it. <laughs> Not like, just only the complexity of it, but this is the power of it. Okay. So this is the, the level that we are kind of uh, trying to go into and, and exploring different levels of parallelism within your programs. If you that, even, I mean, on top of the architecture, of course. Yeah. So back to the accelerator thing, can we expect decent performance out of code that is written and optimized for GPU to run well on, say, Xeon Phi accelerator or FPGA accelerator? I mean, I know this is it's probably not, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that seems insane. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think I can give you a general statement. Okay, yeah. if you do this, there will be this. Let's, no. Has there been any preliminary testing? Uh, I think, I think uh, that's one of the papers that I quote in here that has done some uh, preliminary uh, testing on the target device, okay. on the target construct. Uh, you see some, I think Barbara is a part of it, yeah. yeah. We don't know a lot of the answers here. One of the interesting things is that despite all of this machinery, there are a lot of decisions that the implementation still has to make. And what we discovered is that, that, that we thinking if people are trying to implement it, uh, we don't really understand all of the principles, right? So it's, it's, it's a work in progress. In other words, the compiler has a whole bunch of choices, and sometimes this choice is better than that one. So again, there's, there's even more that you could say. So I think, I think there's a lot to learn here. I think the same will, it holds for OpenACC, which we also implement and has it also has, has a lot of things where I think the, the compiler community in particular is still, still trying to understand how to do it. Um, in general, will the same code run well in, in different places? Uh, in, in the shorter term, I would say the answer is clearly no. Right? We have a long way to go to understand these things. So the dream, of course, is that as we understand this more and the compiler can take a, a, make more of those decisions smartly, that, that there's more hope for, for having at least some measure of portability. But, it would be a bit of a dream right now, I think. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah. So, the specification help you the portability part? Of course, and we designed the, the language. Also, consider that whether if I add this, it will hurt the performance in general. Okay, then we won't do that. So, so that will help you. And also, that, that also provide you a tool flexible enough to kind of fine tune each parameters. Okay, this, I think this is uh, uh, one of our, 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 our objectives here. No, there's, the advantages are obvious. Yeah. <laughs> even, if it's, even if you don't get the portability, it's still extremely useful to, to have one language. Yep. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask, like, um, one feature that there doesn't seem to be here, which I would think the implementers would really want, is that when you first create a variable and or first allocate some memory, that you mark that it's going to be on the device. And the reason why you might want to do this in CUDA, for example, at least the way it used to be, 
is that if you want to do, for example, an asynchronous transfer to device, yeah. it better be in pinned memory when you allocate that data. Yeah. And uh, if, you, if you had something in uh, OpenMP's design where you marked everything you allocated as something that might go on the device, then the compiler could automatically say it's going to be pinned memory. And now it sort of rests on the user to do that and can't provide any feedback to the user. So what if the, there's no target device, I need to run that code onto the CPU, that, that's still okay? Well, I mean, if, it, if it's just gonna be run on the CPU, then, uh, I mean, if, if at runtime, you thought there was gonna be a GPU, but there's no GPU, mm -hmm. then, then yes, you're wasting pin memory. But at compile time, if it's thinking, oh, there is, there's gonna be a GPU there, then it would be able to say, let's put it in pin memory. Mm -hmm. and if there isn't going to be any device, I don't know about any device, I don't know how to compile for any device, then it would just put it, you know, in normal memory. Okay. okay. I mean, so there's, you guys have no consideration of that, but you know. Probably we talk about that, but, but I don't think whether we want to express it into the language level. I think we can talk a little bit later on about, about that, yeah, yeah. Is that uh, something like <clears throat> NVIDIA's unified memory? Thing that they have, where you can specify that? Yeah, I mean, you can you can tell. I mean, they have library routines. If you're trying to say like, um, I want this, yeah, like the memory that you can remotely access from both the CPU and the GPU, that it smooths it over. And and if you if you, it seems like if anybody wanted to implement that, and so that could happen with OpenMP 4.0, it'd be very challenging for them. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, the next topic I'll talk, talk about, the next features I'll talk about is the, the cancellation construct. It's a, AKA is an error model. Probably you'll see a lot of error model uh, name for, for this. Okay, so the whole idea is that, uh, the whole idea is that is uh, in, in HPC uh, space, so most of the time you just, you just run this parallel region to the end. Okay, you assume everything, there's, there's no error there. Well, and give you a result, and then you're happy, and then you go go to writing your paper. Okay, but uh, this is uh, but in 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 general, in non HPC case, and and, so, and in especially in some case that in a non HPC case that uh, some user want to kind of end the parallel region early for some reason, maybe error detection and related error, or any, and then do some recovery, or whatever, and then go on to do some other things. And maybe even uh, uh, there are some algorithms that uh, I want to just do some search, very naive parallel search. Okay, one of the threat, find, the, find the answer. I want to go out uh, quick, uh, quickly, and then I want to inform the other threat quickly. So in the pre 4.0 case, there's no way to do it. You have to run it into a completion and then decide what to do next. Okay, so. Uh, so in the cancellation construct, or cancellation uh, uh, feature is just uh, to, to kind of uh, uh, su support this idea that I want to end my parallel region a uh, little bit earlier than I expect in a sense. So we introduce a set of construct, what we call the cancel construct. And here's the um, syntax, and also it provides a set of uh, uh, only one one time with team to, to get the cancellation. But probably you notice that uh, that will give some burden on the, on, on the runtime. Okay, the runtime need to check a lot of things. Right? Every time you enter a, a, a region, you need to check. And another, another region, you need to check. Okay, so, uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll go back, I'll come back to this uh, issue later on. So what kind of a construct that you can cancel is that uh, uh, you can cancel a parallel, a parallel region and sections region and a loop region and a task group region. Okay, I haven't introduced task group concept yet, but uh, bear with me that this is a new thing that we, we can cancel. It's just grouping a set of the uh, 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 tasks. And so only apply to the innermost and closing open ID construct of a type that is specified in, on, the, on the cancel construct. So the idea is that uh, this is not a very good picture, but it's hopefully illustrate the point that uh, you, you, we have a parallel region here, and then we have, for example, assume that we have three threads here. 
So one of the thread called uh, have the cancel parallel in here. I call the uh, uh, cancel parallel uh, primer here. So what it happened is that this thread will skip all the computation here and jump to the end of this of this region. Okay. So cancel and jump to the end of region. Okay. So uh, how? So what happened to the other the other threads? Okay. The other thread have no idea what's going on on this on the first thread. Okay, uh, so we provide an, another construct to, to have the thread to check the cancellation, uh, whether cancellation has been requested or not on, uh, uh, by the other threads. So if the, if the other thread in here, okay, it cancel here, this thread had no idea until this point, uh, have the cancellation point, uh, so cancellation point parallel. If that, uh, that means, what it means that is uh, uh, whether the cancellation has been requested by the other threads. If that's true, and then this thread will jump to the to the end. Okay, so this is the same thing here. If this thread check before that is being cancelled, it will just have no idea continue until continue to run until the next cancellation point, and then and then it will come and then the whole thing will will end, and then we we'll proceed. Okay, this is the whole this is the the, the whole idea. And so I will also provide a runtime routine to, to query whether the, can, the cancellation is being activated for the whole program. So as I mentioned, that this gives some burden on the runtime, the, the, the OpenMP runtime, and because you need to check the status. And, and so some, implement, some implementer, implementers have some concern about the the performance uh, impact of this of this check, so I think kind of the the compromise or the ag agreement between the committee and the implementers that so uh, the specification can provide a switch that you can switch on and off this uh, uh, cancellation uh, 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 facilities in a sense. So we have uh, we have the the environment variable to to kind of set uh, turn it on and turn it off for that for the whole program. This thing is for whole program. Turn it on and turn it off for the cancellation. Okay, and also that in inside program you can query whether this is being on or off, and then you do the do the do things appropriately. Okay, this is kind of uh, uh, give less burden to the runtime to check all the time. Okay. So here's some examples. Uh, I'll just illustrate that uh, what <laughs> this is, has to be closely nested. So what that means is that if I have the parallel region here and then have a, a cancel parallel, this means it, it's cancel. If if this cancel is canceling this parallel region, uh, right? This is called this nest. And in and another case, I have OpenMP cancel construct, but the the, the, the sections uh, sorry, OpenMP cancel sections. The session construct is in here. It's not closely nested. That means this one is. Has no effect to this guy. Okay, this one, the closing nest, this has to be that uh, 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 setting. So the the same idea as before that I have uh, I have uh, uh, open MP, uh, so open MP parallel, and then I have another nested parallel region here. And but uh, in the same level, I have a cancel parallel. This this cancel parallel just affect to this guy, uh, this enclo the enclosing parallel region, not affect the. Uh, the par this this particular parallel region, yeah. okay. Uh, another example is that if the cancel parallel is out of scope, that means it's being called in the in the function, and this is not allowed. This is invalid. Okay, so so that means that if you want to cancel this parallel, you have to insert the cancel parallel in the lexical context of this parallel construct. Okay. This is a very strict. Uh, kind of restriction in a sense, but uh, it, it helps uh, the the I mean the runtime to uh, to do the check in all this uh, out of scope situation. You know. And I was already mentioned about the cancellation point. The cancellation point, uh, the whole idea is that they allow the user insert the some certain point that the threat or the executing task can check the cancellation status in a sense. Okay, so you can, uh, although there's also a, a set of uh, implicit 
cancellation points uh, in here. So we have, but, but at the same time, you can, you can insert the cancellation point uh, in, in a certain position of your, certain location of your program that, that, that can, can help your algorithm to cancel the, 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 the region. So one, this one example here is that, as I mentioned before, this, uh, Sumdev is doing some naive searching, like uh, I, I searched through different database here, and <clears throat> I do a search, and before I get into the search, I check whether cancellation has been requested. Uh, if not, uh, cancellation has been requested. If not, I will continue this and then do the search. And at the result of this search, if I found, uh, we have found it, I just uh, get into this, and then that is uh, the cancel the parallel region. Okay. So if the other, if they come in the next iteration or another chunk to, to do the check, and then they, they check, uh, get them into here to, to, to do the check, and then they will find that this the cancellation has been requested, and they will skip everything and go to the end of the region, in this case, the parallel region. Okay. So this is the idea to do the cancellation. And the previous uh, description of cancellation is more uh, is applicable to the, the, the loop, work sharing loop, the sections, and the parallel. So the task group is a little bit different. Okay, so bear with me a little bit because I haven't introduced task group yet. But uh, the task group, we just think of it as a set of uh, different tasks. Okay, so at the end of a task group, every task, the, the sibling task, the task and sample, and all the descendant tasks has to be complete before the next, before we proceed from this point. Okay, remember that that the, the task weight that Barbara mentioned this uh, this morning is task weight is a shallow weight. We just wait for a sibling. If any one of a sibling creates some kind, some kind of a children, task weight don't don't care about those two those, those children. Just take, uh, care about the siblings. Okay, and then wait until the sibling has all the sibling complete. And even though the, all the next uh, later generation is still running, I don't care. I it's still proceed. But task group is, a, is, a, is, a, is not a shallow way. It's a deep, deep way. It's just weight everything. Everything that is task that are being generated in here, in here, in here, and I will weigh all the tasks to, to, to complete, to completion in order to proceed. So anyway, this is a brief description of task group. But for the cancellation of task group, it's a bit different. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Because we have so many tasks here, okay? And yeah, for example, this task is running, and then this task is uh, hit the cancellation point, and first find that, okay, cancellation has been requested, okay? So I'll skip it, okay? But again, this task has no idea the cancellation has been, because there's no cancellation point here. It will run to completion, on the completion, uh, this one completion. And how about the, the task is still in the pool? I mean, assume that it's still waiting to be executed. Okay, if the cancellation of the request, this task will not be uh, executed. Okay, so this is a little bit different uh, uh, way of uh, cancelling uh, uh, a task group. I will quickly go through these two examples, and then I will go into the next uh, topics. Um, this is a, ta the, the, a typical uh, task generating the, uh, uh, kind of uh, pattern. So we have uh, a task. Okay, we have a parallel region, and we have a we have a ta uh, we have a, a do while loop generating all the tasks, and then some some other thread will execute on the task, and then we wrap all everything into a task group here. Okay, that means I. And here, I need, to, I need to wait all the tasks to complete in order to proceed. Okay. So, and I do the search, and then one of the, one of the uh, they find a search, and then do the uh, cancel, cancel task group. Okay. So, so the idea is that, okay, for the, for the, for the task that encounter the cancel uh, task group, it will jump to the end of the task, and then go on. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, to end and then to the to the task group, waiting for the other task, and for the task that being already generated but hasn't been executed, it will just stop abort, okay, and it, it won't run it, okay. For the task is has is is already in running, executing, okay, uh, execute the task to complete and then jump and everybody will wait at the, the end of task group and then cancel, okay. 
So there's a whole idea. But anyway, threat affinity is, uh, is another important uh, topic that uh, feature that we, we introduced in the <coughs> in the open before. So the whole, whole idea is just uh, we we provide the, the threat affinity policy, uh, how we put the threat on the processor on the on 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 the hardware, and how how we can fine tune it. Um, so as I said, allow user to have finer control how and where the open bit threads are bound. Okay, remember that we have pop bind. And just kind of uh, on top of it, it, it we have uh, we have further fine tune of the of this, and it, of course you can get better locality and less force sharing or m maybe more memory ban uh, bandwidth. Okay, um, so of course in, the, in this case we also need to expand extend the the open pop bind. Uh, so some terminologies here. Uh, if you read the spare, you will see all this, you will use the terminology of what we call the OpenMP place, places. Okay, place is an abstract concept, okay? And you can associate it to, uh, to any level of a hardware, okay? It's, what it defines here is a place is one or more processes or hardware threads per, per place. This is a collection of hardware processes or a collection of uh, hardware threads, yeah. And OpenMP threads are allowed to move within a place, okay? And OpenMP threads are not allowed to move between places. And then from now on, we use the OpenMP place to explain all the threat affinity. This is kind of abstract level. We don't want to go into too deep in the hardware in the, in, uh, uh, I mentioned in the spec. We just want to have some abstract level and then it's up to users how to map this uh, OpenMP places. So, and we also introduced uh, three uh, affinity policies. And uh, one's uh, what we call close, and uh, the other is called uh, master, and, and the other called spread. <clears throat> close is that assign the threat to places close to the place of the parent threat. Okay, I'll have some di nice diagram to show you that what it means. Master is just basically close to the master thread. And then the spread is just quite, I want to spread it all across. Okay, you see the picture, you see what's the, uh, usage of it, uh, I mean, how, how, how it is useful. And then we also we introduced a, a class on the parallel uh, directive that, on the parallel directive that, uh, that uh, it can, uh, per parallel region, I can kind of fine tune what kind of uh, prop bind policy that I want to use. And also introduce, uh, uh, sorry, extend the prop bind, sorry, ex expand the prop bind uh, environment variable. Instead of just uh, previous, if we have true and false, we have kind of close, close master and spread. So let's look at some example. As remember the, the master the master affinity is uh, is it for best data data locality. Again, basically what it does is just assign open bit thread into the same place as the master. Okay, assume that we have parallel. Okay, so P zero P one P one this this place. Okay, we assume that each place has can have uh, four threads, okay? And in here is that uh, if I have prop by master, and that means I have master policy and two threads, okay? What it means that I want to put this two, I, I, want, I want to put the first thread here, a second thread close to the master thread. This is a closer to the master thread. That means the two, the two thread will on, on the one place, okay? So if I have four, I just put everything close to the master thread. Fourth thread, okay. I mean, in this case, it filled it filled up the first place. Okay, this is the it's closer. Okay, you can see that the data locality because it is a, a processor. Okay, this four hardware. Uh, this is a can have four hardware path, uh, thread. The the data locality is 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 the, is the at the advantage here, right? If you want to access some some data uh, among the four threads here. <clears throat> so the close affinity, okay, also have get some data uh, locality and, and maybe have also achieve some uh, low balancing and for, for the more dedicated resource. So the, what it does is just uh, assign open and thread near the place of the master, okay? So what it does is that, okay, master we put in our P0, we have a close and two thread. We put the, the master thread on the P0, 
the, the next thread you will put on the on the uh, the place close to the master thread. That means it's a P1. Okay, the master close to the master thread. Okay, and if it's uh, close four, so for example, I uh, I start with uh, P4. I put the master thread in P4. Okay, the next thread I will put it in the P5, and then next it will P6 and then P7. So, uh, so in here you can see that if if this false thread is executing executing some heavy stuff, all is heavy stuff, so we will get uh, quite a quite a pretty good load balancing here in a sense. And if I close sixteen, so it will go through a round robin case, right? And this is illustrated in here. The spread affinity is. Uh, is again, it's uh, for also can be for uh, low balancing, and also spread can evenly spread across the among the the, the places. You also allow to sub sub partition the, the 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 place. Okay, let's let's look at some example. So we have a prop bind spread. I assume that you have two threads, and also you sub partition your your places into two pieces. So that means each partition has four places. Then if you do that, it's just, since you have a spread, you want to spread it across. So that means the first thread, put it here. The second spread, you will, so the second thread, you will put it in here, P4, okay? So what's the advantage of here? The advantage is, if think about if you have a nested parallelism. So you have nested parallelism, you want this thread encounter another parallel region. You need to create more thread. And you may want that that children, that that the uh, inner parallelism to closer to that, to to the to the to the to the to the threat that I encountered in inner parallel vision, okay. So that that will that will uh, help the the computation. I mean the performance as well. So there's another way of looking at it. If I spread four, I have a four partition. I have to spread into four sub partition. Okay, this is the the way how how is how it's done. Okay, so so. So you can you can achieve kind of a different uh, 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 threat affinity in the different kind of, in a different policy. Okay, okay. Now, of course, it all also also depends on your application. Right? So there are some syntax for the we introduce the OpenMP place uh, environment variable, and we have some syntax to uh, for 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 that. So what what it means is that. OpenMP, and then you have all this uh, uh, different syntax here. <clears throat> that you, for example, you have a uh, 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 zero to uh, sixteen uh, processor. So you want uh, you want to have uh, each processor on one place. So that means this is how you want to each on one place. So for example, you have uh, uh, I mean there are yeah sixteen again. So you want to group the first four in the one place, and then the next four in the, another place, the first four in another place. This is how you express, uh, express it. So uh, on the same 16 process, I want to just treat this, OK, this is a 16 thread. OK, that means 16 different uh, places. So this is how this, the open MP uh, places syntax is very flexible. You can take a look at the spec to kind of get, you can express it as a thread, as a socket, and also as a processor, I think. So just go through uh, one example, and I think I will stop after this one example, unless you want to, you guys want to go on. <laughs> Probably another two hours. <laughs> uh, how to use place list? Okay. So assume that we have uh, we have, we have uh, this uh, hypothetical hypothetical system. We have two chips. Each chip has four cores, and each core each core has uh, eight hardware threads. Okay. Just kind of uh, ni nicely drawn here. So, if I have uh, one place per hardware thread, that means I will express this in this 0, 1, 2, uh, 15. Okay. And if I and also I can I, I can have uh, this and this uh, expression, as many as available. It's just to express. So, if I, if I have one place per core. Including both the hardware threads, then I can, I can have uh, uh, this expression. It's a state that okay, zero one is one place, 
Okay, zero one is on one core, on, on one core, and two, three, and or maybe some a short form expression. And also even say that, okay, and I have cores, I have four cores here. Okay, so um, how about if I, I want to one place per chip? Okay, so that means my place I map to a chip, therefore, okay? So that I have a one seven and nine seven, that, that kind of uh, idea. So there's a very flexible syntax that you can and kind of express your 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 just specific your target uh, uh, architecture. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me see what's next. Okay, why is nine to seven in the last row? You have one to seven and nine to seven. It should be eight to seven. Oh, uh, it should be eight to seven. Yeah. The task dependence, remember that the tasks are all the independent work. You can just uh, create, put it on a pool, and then collect it, and then you can run independently anytime within, within the, the teams. So yeah, this is already powerful. So uh, and, and also, that, uh, we introduce the task dependence that, that we have a dependent clause, depend clause, and then you can express the dependency between tasks, OK? You can just kind of uh, further kind of find, you can further fine tune using the task, tasking, further fine tune the, uh, the, the, the computation of the, the, the order of the, the, the task. You, that, that you can, it could be helpful on some application. I won't say all applications, it's helpful on some application. And uh, so the user defined in reduction, okay? So Barbara mentioned, Barbara already went through the, the reduction example and reduction clause. So that is a, the 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 the, the pre four zero reduction is basically is a predefined set of reduction. Okay, you have class and also predefined set of uh, types that you can use for your this reduction. That you can only have intrinsic type in Fortran and built-in types in C or C plus plus. Nothing else. Okay, the re, the reduction the user defined reduction kind of extend that idea, and that you 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 can you not you can you can only, you can use a different operation. Uh, than the building operation. You can use different kinds of types. You can have the user defined type, your own defined type in the in the uh, in the user defined operation. It's pretty powerful kind of uh, as, uh, thing. And the atomic uh, construct probably don't see it. Okay, you will see in the slides. Atomic uh, construct uh, extension is just a, a, this 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 one is a little bit further. Uh, we introduce atomic swap. Uh, that kind of operation within the atomic construct uh, con uh, context. So the last one, uh, the second last one is open OMP display and environment variable. Remember that uh, Barbara reminds us uh, uh, to uh, make sure that you check all the default settings of the of the compilers. Uh, sometimes you 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 may be very hard to to find out. Uh, you can probably dig through the documentation or try out a simple program to to see what's the, what's the, what, the, what the output is. Uh, but uh, in this case. Uh, we introduce a new environment variable, just uh, let the uh, runtime to display all the settings before, I mean, when you run the program, with that uh, OMP display env equal to true, equal to true, and then the runtime will display all the settings that they will use in that execution. And then you can easily find out all the default settings in there. And then you can also, for diagnostic purpose, or also for information purpose as well. It's a, it's a very simple uh, feature, but I can, uh, I can see there's a very, very useful for a feature. So um, the Fortran 2003 support, and uh, that can have another two hours on it by itself. <laughs> you want me to talk and talk to for two hours for this two hours, we went through a long way to support, only get us to the sub, uh, partial uh, um, uh, 2000, Fortran 2003 support. There's a lot of the interesting issue that we need to tackle in the resolve. Uh, we haven't resolved it because I'm, I've been tackling those features for the last few years, basically. But, uh, um, so, but anyway, we got to a lot of uh, uh, Fortran 2003 constructs. I didn't listen there because, because that can be another kind of 20, 20 50 slices in there. So, uh, but uh, the, in the 4.0, we achieved quite a bit. We kind of take down quite a lot of features that we can say that this, this, this uh, the, the OpenMP specs support those uh, Fortran 2003 features. 
And so, so we hope that in the next several revision, we will complete this and then we'll move on further because for chance getting to 2008 now already several years ago. And then they are working on 2000, I think 14 or 20, I forgot what the number is. So uh, it's uh, catching up. Yeah. Okay, I'll stop here.